How hard would this have gotten cancelled if it came out today? But nobody cancels it. You know why? Because back when that show came out, we didn't have this horrible, hyper-toxic, anti-SJW online culture. It didn't exist. If cartoons came out with progressive stuff, there wasn't like a swerving horde of angry white guys online to seethe over it, so people just accepted that it was good. I, I had like an unbelievably good idea, you know? And it was like, wouldn't it be funny if I could pretend to be like an anti-SJW and I could cancel uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, you know? Because, like, what's one of the most unimpeachable pieces of animated media in the past 20 years? It's Avatar The Last Airbender. Everyone loves Avatar The Last Airbender, you know? But if Avatar came out today, I think it would be written off as, like, woke SJW media with, like, conservative YouTubers taking shots of it and saying how the cucked, woke, Nickelodeon feminazis made it, you know? Because I remember, okay, first of all, if you haven't seen Avatar The Last Airbender, it's a really, really, really good show. So, like, you, sh you should. It's one of the very few things that I would say nails the all-ages demographic, you know? Like, when you play a Mario game, you can be 8, you can be 18, it's a Mario game. Whatever. And The Last Airbender, legit, I think you get just as much watching it as an adult as a kid. It's just really good media. They just did a really good job making it, you know? But it's also an explicitly progressive, multiracial, anti-imperialist message. Like, the, the main villains are almost explicitly fascists. I mean, I I'm just gonna spoil everything. You should have watched it by now. I don't care about any of you. The Fire Nation is, like, very clearly the post-industrial, hyper-nationalist, imperialist, um, like, like, world con- I mean, they're, they're like an allegory, almost, for Imperial Japan, which was a fascist, you know, country. Um, it, the the first scene of, of two of the characters, uh, Sokka and Katara, is Sokka getting called out for being a misogynist. Do you remember that? I can't show any of this because it's all copyright or whatever. But the first scene was like Sokka talking down to Katara, even though she was clearly more mature than him, even though he was older, and deriding her for being a girl who likes stupid girl stuff. And Katara chided him, and she ended up being the sort of intelligent one in that engagement because Sokka's kind of a, a dumbass, you know? Sokka's literally like, yeah, a toxic masculine archetype who's so obsessed with being like a alpha male that he ends up making a fool of himself. And later, like, I think episode like five, he ends up getting shown up by a group of female warriors who have him cross dress and teach him how to fight. Can you imagine a modern piece of media where the gung-ho male character is uh, 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 um, beaten by a group of warrior women who explicitly call attention to the fact that they're women, and then to train him, he has to wear their gear, and they, they, he's, it's like, hey, you look good in that dress. You know? Like, that would be conservative YouTuber content, wouldn't it? The progressive messaging is everywhere. Katara arguing with Sokka, being a misogynist, the Kyoshi warriors, when uh, Katara goes up to the North Pole, uh, they have a patriarchal society that doesn't allow her to learn waterbending unless she wants to be a healer, but she's a badass warrior, so she ends up fighting against the system and ends up, like, challenging the, uh, the, um, what, what's, what was the guy's name? Master Pagu or something? The, the really nasty misogynistic guy? Paku, thank you. Uh, up in the North Pole. Yeah. Fog you, yeah. Um, but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Like, how hard would this have gotten cancelled if it came out today? But nobody cancels it. You know why? Because back when that show came out, we didn't have this horrible, hyper-toxic, anti-SJW online culture. It didn't exist. 
if cartoons came out with progressive stuff, there wasn't like a swarthing horde of angry white guys online to seethe over it. So people just accepted that it was good. But if it came out today, then yeah, you know, also it's very good. Anti-SJWs don't care whether or not something is good. All they care about is if it's woke, if it's progressive or compromising, it's the progressive... If it's cucked or whatever, they don't they don't make comments on the quality of the media. They get angry over whether or not it's too progressive. Yeah. The only point that I'm getting at, because ATLA did it well. No, no, no. So it is true that ATLA is almost a transcendentally good piece of media, but it's because the culture of anti-woke criticism didn't exist back then. That's why. Trust me. If a piece of media as good as um, Avatar The Last Airbender came out today and was equal in its progressive messaging, it would be getting a ton of blowback from the right. 100%. Absolutely it would. Um, the whole, uh, the whole show is just ripe with stuff. I recently rewatched it about a year ago, and I kept watching these scenes and thinking, how was there never any outrage about this? And then I remembered. Oh yeah, YouTube didn't exist back then. Twitter didn't exist back then. <laughs> so there was no outrage because nobody was making money telling other people to be angry about it, you know? It, yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, I, I, phenomenal. What but they did? I don't know when they were created. The culture didn't exist at the time. You know exactly what I mean. Ended in 2008, YouTube was about a year old. Yeah, okay, YouTube was about a year old, but back in those days of YouTube, the only thing people uploaded were cat videos and videos of, like, backyard science experiments, okay? They were not, like, anti-SJWs with mic and camera and lighting setups talking about how media... Quit with the pedantry, I'll ban all of you. Um, anyway, just, I don't know, a better time, you know? Um, you, see, you see shows today getting cancelled for doing stuff that ATLA was getting away with, like, 20 years ago, you know? Um... The only thing I can think of, did ATLA have anything, like, um, gay? Uh, I don't remember. Did, did it? I don't actually remember. I don't think it had any queer stuff. No, of course Korra did. I know Korra did. I mean The Last Airbender. Yeah, I know. I've seen Korra. I know. They, they like, hold hands. Did they kiss? I forget. Korra wasn't as good as ATLA. ATLA had some pretty queer-coded pirates. Yeah, but that doesn't count. That's just like a jokey thing. Okay, they didn't have any queer stuff. They had feminist stuff, anti-imperialist stuff, and multiracial stuff. Um, also, one of the most significant um, like plot beats, or I guess one of the big themes behind Avatar The Last Airbender was uh, a, a repudiation of the whole uh, you know might makes right philosophy. That's pretty critical to conservative or at least reactionary thought. The idea that there's some inherent existential value to power, you know? But the show didn't care about that at all. The main character, Aang, was the biggest pacifist. Uh, he mourned the loss of his people, who were themselves pretty pacifist by the standards of the world they lived in. There really wasn't much military glorification in the show. Because every time you saw a military... In The Last Airbender, it was the Fire Nations, and it ruined the world. It tortured and pillaged and destroyed everything. The military was never really shown in a positive light at any point, you know? In fact, when you got to Ba Sing Se in the Earth Kingdom, you meet the first, like, paramilitary force you see in the show, and it's the Dai Li, and they're feds, <laughs> and they're horrible. The message being, um... The secret police are a fundamentally reactionary force. I mean, uh, the it was so, um, yeah, literally, like, these secret, like, SS shadow agents may as well belong to the enemy because they have no allegiance to the country they're, they're stomping on, you know? I also like they showed that the Fire Nation civilians are also victims of their imperialism. God, the show was so good. How do you fit all this into a kid's show, man? They even had episodes dedicated to exactly that. When they were in the Fire Nation, yeah, Fire Nation kids are stifled and oppressed, but on the whole, they're exactly the same as kids anywhere else. 
Fire Nation villages are being destroyed by the pollution and industrialization that the nation is engaging in just so they can build more warships. It's, it's perfect. Yeah, Ba Sing Se is divided by class with an explicit criticism, not just of the monarchy, but of essentially the bourgeois, you know? Christ, it was such a good show, man. Was there environmental stuff as well in the show? Aang is basically Captain Planet. I think at least, like, six episodes were explicitly about him fighting back against the destruction of the environment, you know? He's- yeah, he does that a lot. His first encounter with the spirit world was him, uh, trying to- uh, there was a deforested, uh, well, forest, uh, uh, field, you know? Um, the only nation shown to be almost exclusively good were the air nomads and they got got. Not even that, though, because- Maybe this is just my interpretation. It felt like the air nomads were pretty stri stifling and conservative themselves. You didn't see much of them, but seeing, like, their, like, elders talk about the Avatar and society in general, they seemed really stiff and unflexible and immobile and unwilling to, you know, that kind of thing. And that's just my interpretation. Well, maybe, maybe. That's just a feeling that I got. Yeah, they seemed like in the text they were pretty, yeah, you know. Yeah, Aang rebelled against them. That's why he fled. That's why he got frozen for a hundred years. Um, yeah, Earth General Fong tried to weaponize the Avatar state. That's true. Even when the Earth Kingdom showed its military off, the Earth Kingdom's military was usually at best misguided. There were only a couple of times the military was shown positively, and it was usually like in a very explicit self-defense kind of sense, you know? The Northern Water Tribe's military was just like, please don't destroy our people, <laughs> you know? Um, the um the earth kingdom ha w did have a military but it didn't wasn't really shown that much the only time it was shown in a positive light was when they fought off that giant fire nation drill the one that approached the outer wall but beyond that the earth kingdom's military was always like this distant you know unapproachable nationalistic you know most of the fighting back that the gang did was rallying the people you know don't forget the Earth Kingdom military being shitty and Zuko alone. Dude, this was too much moral complexity. Uh, this, is, this was too much moral complexity for a kid's show. They were too good. They were ahead of their time. In the episode Zuko alone, where Zuko, who is at this point in the show, basically an antagonist still, um, he goes off on his own because he's been exiled from the Fire Nation and he's starving and he doesn't have any food and he's sad. And he walks through the Earth Kingdom and he encounters Earth Kingdom soldiers who are using their authority to bully the citizens of a village into giving them, like, food and doing whatever and overlooking crimes they commit, you know? And Zuko stands up against them. And in, it's, it's so clear. The Fire Nation isn't the threat. Power is the threat. It's almost an anarchist subtext, seriously. It's not just one nation bad, one people bad, because that's not true. They explicitly reject those theses. The story is, abused power is bad. The ability to control others is bad, you know? That was always and always and always. That was always the message that came out time and time again. Earth Kingdom soldiers, the Dai Li, the Fire Kingdom, any time a group of people have power and the, the, the feeling they have the right to use it to control others, bad things happen. Every time. Every time. It was good. Also, it was just a good show for... A million other reasons, you know? Oh, God! Toph! Dude, if Toph was a character today, the anti-SJWs would have a fit over her. Wow, she's like a little girl, but she's strong and more masculine than everyone else. So woke. I bet they're gonna make her a trans boy in the next episode. Toph sounds like Toph. Wow. Oh, yeah, and she's disabled. Yeah. No, just, you know what they would say if she was a character like today, right? Wow, what a girl boss. The feminazis are forcing us to watch little media. Everyone knows that in reality, boys are stronger than girls. Like, we know exactly what would happen. Oh, man. Also, bloodbending super bad. Yeah, bloodbending was considered, like, explicitly evil because the only thing you can do with it is control other people. Um, yeah. She does become a cop, but she leaves because... Let's not talk about Korra. Let's not talk about Korra, okay? Korra has mixed political messaging. I'm talking about the last Airbender right now. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Let's, let's, no Korra discourse at the moment. We're just talking about the last Airbender. Man. Um, yeah. 
I just love how they used her blindness to build upon her character. Yeah. Oh, there was another cute episode, too. When they were in Bossing Se and Katara and Toph went off and had, like, a ladies' day or something, and they went and got makeup or something, and Toph was like, I don't really think of myself as the type of person to wear makeup, but I guess it's cool to try once in a while. There was, th there was a, a rejection of so much, like, essentialist identity building, you know? Um, that I thought was nice, you know? Um, yeah. Or the Jet episode. Yeah, or the Jet episode. Tankies hate the Jet episode. Tankies despise the Jet episode. You mean the one where Earth Kingdom uh, 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 renegades um, use extreme measures to try to take out uh, Fire Nation soldiers, even if it means killing, like, everyone, like, all of them, and also allies? You know, let's flood a whole town. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he turns out to be the bad guy. Yeah, of course they would hate that. I can't believe this show is condemning the anti-colonial jet forces like he was going to kill like thousands of civilians you know <laughs> yeah um literally a tanky yeah and he ended up being creepy you know i do hate the jet episode you haven't talked about iroh everyone knows about iroh he's perfect everyone knows him iroh is one of the most beloved characters possibly in all of animated western canon i actually ca he actually might be one of the most well celebrated animated characters in the history of the medium in the West. It's, yeah, it's, he's that far up there. And, um, and he was a general who failed, and then he, like, retired, and everyone thought less of him for it, but he became more actualized and more, uh, evolved more as a person by being, like, a, a you know, just a, an old dude wandering around taking care of his nephew. And then when he showed up again to Ba Sing Se, it was to defend it against the Fire Nation, you know? Iroh has a problematic moment with June that people would lose their shit out if it came over today. That is totally right. Oh my god, thank you for reminding me. So there was a scene where they, um... There's a scene... Oh yeah, I remember this. There's a, So actually, everyone would despise this, okay? Everyone would. So anti-SJWs would despise June because she is the epitome of like girl boss badass, right? Like the the woman up there on the mount. She seriously, she shows up and just beats everyone. Does anyone remember this? She showed like we're taught this is the avatar and the avatar's companions and like everyone else and then she shows up and just whips ass, you know? Um and uh, anyway, so the anti-SGWs would say this is a feminazi, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, she gets paralyzed by her own mount's, like, stinger tongue or whatever. And then... Uncle, I didn't see you get hit with the tongue. Get it? See, she's paralyzed, so now he's, like, hugging her. But, like, he's not paralyzed, and she knows. So it's like, he's, he's just, like, hugging her, you know? See, she's mad. I think it's funny that she's awake for that, though, you know? It aged poorly. It did age poorly. However, the fact that she's awake does make it significantly funnier in retrospect. Because, because rather than it being like he got away with it, you know the moment she was able to move her muscles again, she, like, kicked him through a wall or something. That does make it better. That does improve the, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's like, it, the show's like, we're on to you. Anyway, well, whatever. It's the... Yeah. Yeah, doesn't she literally kick his ass later? Yeah. Uh, creepy old man comedy is something special. Nowhere in anywhere in the show is he disrespectful towards women, so I think this is just like an aberration of writing, more so than it is indicative of some underlying character flaw, you know? They threw it in there because it'd be like, oh, haha, it's funny, but it's not like, and what we're supposed to take from this is that Iroh is sexually predatory, because he's not anywhere. Um, yeah. Isn't she his niece, though? No, no, the, 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 Zuko's his nephew. That lady's just a mercenary. Oh, wait, remember her introductory scene, um, where she's arm wrestling a guy who looks like a human boulder, and she beats him in arm wrestling? Remember that? That's another one they'd get super mad over. This is a good video idea. The, the video, this, Tempest, I know you're there. The, vi this is called, Avatar would be canceled if it came out today, you know? And people are going to think, oh my god, what content has he un unveiled? But no, actually, it's because the anti-SJWs would despise it. They miss out on so much good stuff. Yeah, here we go. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. 
He's, is this, what's his name? Re Ken from Street Fighter? <laughs> Do you mean? Boy, you not lazy. Yeah, yeah, and she like, Ryu? Ryu, sorry, Ken's the other one, right? Ken's the blonde one? Yeah? I think people miss out on a lot of good media because they're told not to like it for political reasons. And I honest to God mean that both ways. I think there are a lot of conservative leaning people who will miss out on a lot of really good stuff because the anti SJW YouTubers or the quartering or whatever are like, eh, it has a woman and a black guy in it, you know? And likewise, I think there are a lot of progressive people who are afraid to get into pieces of media that are known for having dicier communities, you know? Maybe because they don't want to engage with it or whatever, when there's a lot of good stuff there, you know? Like Warhammer 40k. I've been talking about it a lot lately because I've been reading the books, but, like, the Warhammer universe has so much cool stuff in it, you know? And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I'm not gonna Rick and Morty, no, no, but you know what I mean, though, right? Like, Remember what Anita Sarkeesian so widely said, you know, wisely, sorry. Well, I guess she said it widely and wisely. Um, it's okay to enjoy problematic media as long as you're aware of its more pernicious elements. It's just like that, you know? If you know there's something up with it, that, but that doesn't mean you can't watch and enjoy it. You know, you can watch it and think, well, that's not great, but you can enjoy the rest of it, you know? And sometimes you can appreciate things in their context, kind of in part because of the problematic elements a little bit. Because um, it's it's like a reminder for how far we've come. Maybe you can think of it that way, you know what I mean? Like if you go back and you watch like really good movies from like, like Casablanca, for example, if you, you can watch that. It's not like modern progressive standards are being upheld in this three trillion year old movie, but it's a good movie. It's, it's good. The old, uh, Indiana Jones films, too, you know? You can take a look at those and think, like, oh, well, it's not great, but, you know, hey, cool, history.